Welcome to Forest News. In our next few episodes, we're gonna be visiting the Caldor Fire to learn a little bit more about fuel treatment areas and how they can affect fire behavior and intensity. The Caldor Fire started near Omo Ranch on August 14th. Within days, it was making explosive runs of 10 to 40,000 acres a day. The question is why? Why this type of intense fire behavior? Let's start by looking at the hazardous fuel arrangement of the mixed conifer forests surrounding the Caldor Fire in many locations in California. First, there's an overabundance of surface fuels. Years of pine needle cash, brush, dead and down logs and branches. Next, there's ladder fuels. These are shade tolerant tree species growing beneath the canopy of the mature trees. Last, there's the densities of the mature trees themselves. In many locations across California, there are more trees per acre than would naturally occur in a fire adapted ecosystem. They're growing close together and their crowns are overlapping and even touching. In this fuel arrangement, fire can quickly spread from the surface fuels into the ladder fuels and up into the crowns of the trees. You now have a high intensity crown fire. It gets even worse. Let's now take that same forest and put it on the side of the hill. Let's also bake it in the sun with two years of extreme drought. This is the recipe for a terrain driven fire. We haven't even mentioned wind yet. Wind gusts during a red flag warning can continually push those flames even faster up those hills. This can quickly accelerate the growth of a wildfire. These factors, fuel loading, terrain, drought, and wind all combine to create intense, rapidly spreading fire behavior. The exact type of fire behavior firefighters were battling here on the Caldor Fire and other incidents throughout the state this entire season. These types of fires limit the ability of our firefighters to directly attack the head of the fire. It's often ineffective or too dangerous. That's not to say that our firefighters aren't directly attacking the fire on its flanks or at its head with aviation resources, but they must respond according to environmental conditions and narrow time constraints. In our next episode, we'll look at how fuel treatment areas within the Caldor Fire significantly reduced the fire's intensity and decreased its resistance to control. Thanks for watching and we hope you stay tuned.